a GW Company Lab. Before I get into the next review, um, which we're going to review Darkman today. If you guys haven't seen that, it's a pretty cool film. There's some things we're going to discuss about it. But I want to also give a big shout out, and I mean really big shout out to a new subscriber, <clears throat> Megan Diana, who is pretty awesome. Um, so yesterday, guys, I'll give you a little bit of a summary of what we do on the weekends. We usually go visit my grandmother and we also go visit my wife's mother, both of which are in assisted living facilities. But on the way, we usually do breakfast at Eaton Park and, uh, Meg has worked there. Crap. I don't even know how long, as long as we've been going there, I guess. And it never occurred to us to actually get to know her. But we had an issue yesterday, and basically Megan took care of it, and we've talked to her a little bit about it, and, you know, got to know her just a tad, and, you know, she was just completely awesome about the whole situation, and I just wanted to say again, Meg, thank you for handling that and also being pretty awesome. And every time you guys go in there, there's a few waitresses in there that bust their tail, and she's one of them. And she's also a pretty cool person. Like I said, talking to her in just a few minutes, you can get a good read on somebody. And she is very, very, very cool. Uh, she made my wife stay, as a matter of fact. After we had come home from Butler yesterday, my wife said, you know what? Megan really, uh, really helped out. I said, yeah. So she subscribed, and I just wanted to give her a huge shout out to uh to not only say thank you but welcome aboard and uh very cool person i've also subscribed to her youtube channel and uh once i get you know a free minute to check it out because yesterday was a little hectic i'm gonna do some comments but anyway we're gonna dive into dark man now a lot of people think that deadpool was the first r-rated superhero movie and I got to digress. It was either it's a debate between this or night or Dolph Lundgren's The Punisher, which that's a whole nother review for another time. But anyway, so we're going to get into this. So Dark Man is about it. Actually, look, before we even get into the, the story, let's get into the characters. You have Francis McDormand as Julie Hastings. Now, you guys know she had an amazing film career. She's done Fargo. She did a movie that was very powerful called Three Billboards... Just give me a second. Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And I wanted to make sure I got that title right. That is a very, very powerful movie about a woman trying to make a change. Um, she's been in a lot of the Coen Brothers stuff, Blood Simple think that was her first acting gig this had to be maybe her second or third i'm not sure but uh <clears throat> very very talented actress and uh then we move into dark man the main character that is played by none other guys than liam neeson and it's funny because you watch this and then go to some of his current action stuff it's pretty neat <clears throat> and he also plays dark man now in the sequel to dark man he is replaced by arnold Vosloo. Who you guys might know is, you know, he was the mummy. He was the mummy or the, yeah, the mummy in the mummy films. <clears throat> so we're going to see how the sequel stacks up to this one. But there's a lot to cover here. Playing the villain is none other than Larry Drake. Now horror films are going to, horror film fans, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll probably know Larry Drake best for the character of Dr. Giggles, a movie which we're going to cover later on. And he was known as Robert G. Durant. Now, he did have... He was on... Um, I want to say L.A. Law, I think. And his character on L.A. Law was a far, far cry from... The evil villain you see here. I believe it's L.A. Law. His name was Benny on the show. That's all I know. I didn't really do too much digging. But apparently Benny was the nicest guy. The character was nice. Does everything for everybody. 
Robert Durant is the opposite. There's, I mean, he's one of the most charismatic, evil, you don't know what the hell's going on inside his head. He operates on a psychopathic level type character. So, playing Lewis Strack Jr. is Colin Friel's. Now, Colin Friel's character, Lewis Strack, is uh, one of those dudes that wants to build a city, doesn't care how he does it, doesn't care who he runs over, he's all about the corporate greed stuff. But, <clears throat> let's get into the summary of the movie. First of all, one of the things, before we even get into the summary, is this was directed by Ted Raimi. Uh, Sam Raimi, sorry, not Ted. Ted was in the film, actually. He plays Rick. So, it was a family affair. Also, at the very end of this movie, Raimi fans will kind of be cool. It'll be cool because Bruce Campbell makes a five-second appearance. Now, for those of you who know the Raimi <clears throat> Campbell situation, they work together on Evil Dead, the Evil Dead films, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness. So, it was sort of a little homage to that or a tribute to that. And I think uh, Bruce Campbell was just on the set that day and they said, hey, you know, make an appearance. But regardless of that, now let's get into the summary of the film. Peyton Westlake's character, played by Liam Neeson, obviously, is a scientist working on a formula to make synthetic skin. Julie Hastings' character or Francis McDormand's character, Julie Hastings, is a attorney who uncovers a memorandum that she shouldn't have found out that details criminal dealings with Durant and Lewis Strack Jr. in the film. So what's the best way to take care of a situation? Well, you destroy the evidence and you destroy everyone around them. And that's exactly what Lewis Strack orders Durant to do. Destroy the memorandum, kill anyone associated with it, and basically, you know, try to get past this because they don't want any prosecution coming back their way. Simple little concept. But <clears throat> what happens in the movie, guys, is that they, the Robert Durant and his guys blow up the lab that <clears throat> Peyton Westlake is working on. They don't kill him. They horribly disfigure the guy and make it look like he's dead. Meanwhile, he's still alive. So now what you have, guys, is the film shifts gears from a typical superhero movie to sort of a Phantom in the Opera type affair where you see Peyton Westlake's character transform into Dark Man. He runs around in the shadows. He's trying to perfect it. And it almost becomes also a Frankenstein-ish sort of deal. Um, and you can see tributes of those films or inspirations of those films in this this particular film. Then it turns on to full-blown superhero slash horror film with Durant and his guys being targeted by Darkman. And it also has moments of very high tension because Darkman can also now, with the skin, the synthetic skin being... <clears throat> being, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, being perfected, he can now become the people closest to Durant or even Durant himself, which leads to some pretty cool confrontations. The only thing about the skin in this movie is it only lasts for 99 minutes, so there is a time frame on there. There is some really, really cool, cool stuff in here. There's also on the cheap, because this, this movie, guys, was not a CGI-filled movie. It relied on the green screen. There is a stunt involving a helicopter in the third act of the movie, which Liam Neeson did himself. So when you watch this, or you watch anything about this, he did this scene by himself, and Sam Raimi was just like, dude, you're going to be 15 feet off the ground, you're going to be fine. Actually, he was probably about 50, 60, 70 feet off the ground. You can check it out. But he did his own stunt, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um... <clears throat> typical superhero movie stuff. It ends, like I said, and there will be a sequel. But as far as violence in this movie goes, oh my god, guys. There's a lot. 
there's a lot of stuff. Uh, not all of it is a graphic. But there's enough to sort of keep you going. And one thing I liked about this movie is even after an action set piece, you took your breath, you were kind of thrown into another one. So it was like, bang, bang, bang. It never gave you a chance to really settle in, grab a Coke, take a breath, and go, okay, what's next? There was always something action-oriented going on. So right off the bat, I can tell you there's a lot of people in the first opening sequence of this movie that get wiped out in a deal gone bad with the rant. And, <clears throat> and another local gangster. Uh, obviously there's, there's close, there's, uh, gunshots, point blank gunshots in this. There is, uh, multiple stabbings. One guy, Ted Ramey, as a matter of fact, gets his head crushed with a car that happens off screen. One guy gets thrown out of a high rise building. Actually, there's a couple of couple of falls in there. One guy gets thrown off a high-rise building, like I just said. Another one actually gets thrown off of a building or a high-rise under construction. There is a helicopter explosion, which two or three people get blown up. A uh, lot of shooting, you know, a lot of people getting shot in this film. So it's your typical, you know, it's your typical uh, action film. Nothing really creative in the way of kills um, that I know. I think yesterday when we did Southern Comfort, when I wrote, when I did that review, those kills were a little bit more creative. But given the story, you didn't really need, you know, outrageous kills. You just, you guys didn't, you know what I mean? It was just enough to, <coughs> to sort of you know, pretty much keep it in reality. A lot of cars get blown up on this. Like I said, in that helicopter set piece, there is a lot of cars that get blown up. It looked like something out of the Fast and the Furious. But uh, like I said, just mentioning a minute ago about the green screen, I know Sam Raimi was going for something a little bit. It, this movie is a blender of all things, as I just said. It's a superhero movie. It's a horror film. It's a action adventure some of the green screen stuff and some of the stunts and some of the quick shots ted Raimi uses they're on the cheesy level but for a comic book film it does work so not a bad film by any means highly entertaining and i've never sat down and watched these these came out in um 1990 1989 1990 and I remember these being on TV, and they, like, Fox 53, they would have them, like, in order, you know, occasionally. And I remember seeing the TV spot for it, and I'm like, ooh, I'll check it out. My dad's like, you know, it's too violent, son. So, years later, I recorded them off Cinemax, and they've been sitting in here. So, my wife bought me the Shout Factory Trilogy Blu-ray, um... Blu-rays, you know, Dark Man, Dark Man 2, The Return of Durant, and Dark Man 3, Die, Dark Man, Die. But it's funny, too, because when you you look up on this film or whatever, normally, if it's an actor's first mainstream film, they do it just to get recognized, and they don't ever go back and look back at that the movie they just did. But Liam Neeson has always looked back on this and said this was a pretty fun time. Pretty fun time. And he holds holds the film dear. Now this film didn't really do good at the box office. And you could kind of see why. I think the idea of an R-rated superhero film kind of got lost in the transition, at least back then. Nowadays, I mean, Deadpool blew the door open for that and... Uh, you know, people were more used to the idea. And I think also The Punisher with Dolph Lundgren didn't do really good. But Darkman as a character, you know, as a comic book character, works very well. Because the origins are there, you know, people destroy everything that, that he had. Now he's on a revenge trip. And there's a lot of action there. And it's actually a very fun movie. 
The only thing that I'm kind of skeptical about is if you do watch the movie, Durant's death, there really would be no way to come back from that. But this is movie magic, so somehow they bring him back for the sequel. How well that's going to work, I don't know. An interesting point about the villain Durant, too. You'll notice when you watch this that every time he confronts somebody, he takes their fingers, keeps them in a cigar case. thought that was pretty wicked. And like I said, Larry Drake, when you watch this and watch Darkman, I mean, the dude has some psychotic qualities that make him a perfect villain. But all in all, you know, cheesy shots aside, this was a high, this was a pretty good octane high action movie. The stunts were great. You know, the story kind of followed through. And it's funny because they set Darkman up almost like a Deadpool character because he can feel no pain. Um, he has extremely, extremely, you know, uh, extremely high strength. He has extremely high, you know, tolerance. And when he gets mad, he gets mad. But like I said, the, the set pieces in this movie are pretty good. If redone, this movie would probably be a more streamlined movie. But that's not to say that this film wasn't bad. This film was fun to watch from start to finish, and it didn't waste any time. I mean, some people, some movies, they take time getting the story together. This one did not. This one, right out of the gate, I mean, you're introduced to the characters for maybe five, six minutes of screen time, and then bang, the lab blows up, then you see him, Dark Man, and then you see him go after Durant's guys, and then you see the whole final confrontation, and it never lets you, it never lets you, like I said, relax, and I liked it. So, <clears throat> we're going to be doing the sequel. Now, Shout Factory, if you're interested, has put out another blu a Blu-ray of this. Okay? Um, has a lot of stuff. From, you know, interviews, to trailers, to a, a uh, vintage electronic press kit. A lot of people don't know what those are. Those are what you would, like, summarize the movie with. You'd give a trailer, a couple scenes. You'd have actors talk about a couple of scenes in the movie. And they'd show it to, like, HBO or something. And if HBO or Cinemax or Showtime bought the film, you would see that, like, whenever they had 15 minutes of, of nothing, they would show that to get you interested to watch the movie, you know. There is a lot of lot of stuff here. There's storyboards. Storyboards are always fun to check out because it's the it's the artist rendition of an action set piece or a scene that never took place. Like if you guys bought the Goonies 40th anniversary, there is a storyboard of a scene that never came to light. But it's fun to see that and see what could have been. All kinds of good stuff. But uh yeah, Dark Man as a character, as a comic book hero, pretty badass. <coughs> <coughs> and like I said, top-notch cast. And you got Liam Neeson and, Fr and Francis McDormand. I mean, what else you want? Larry Drake rounding out the cast. I mean, all good people. You know, very good stuff. So check it out. And again, I want to thank Megan Diana for taking care of that problem. And I hope she checks this out. She says she watches a lot of movies, guys. So maybe she'll learn a lot of good crap from me. But uh, that's my movie pick for today. Next week, we'll try to do the sequel. We'll try to wrap up the Dark Man trilogy, what I think about it. And I did hear, though, if you're interested, I did hear that there was a TV show in the works by Universal Studios past. A fourth film was discussed i don't know how close we are to production on that or even if it's going into production so <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see the future of dark man if they're going to remake it i mean hell they remade the toxic avenger it's coming out later this year so we'll have to see anyway thanks to all my fans and i hope you guys check these out and i hope you guys enjoy these movies as much as i do but believe me if one movie sucks i'm gonna tell you just like the new Texas Chainsaw remake, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remakes. I don't even address that film because that film to me was the lowest piece of crap ever. But I have my view. 
you guys have your view and that's what makes the world go round. But uh, definitely check out Darkman if you haven't seen it. At least from the first one. Cheesy, crazy, action filled, fun roller coaster ride. And Liam Neeson, Francis McDormand, Larry Drake. Make it all worth your time.